Hey guys, in this tutorial we're going to talk about how to import and use videos in your iClone project. So we're going to talk about the various import methods as well as how to uh, map your videos to certain objects and all sorts of other fun stuff like uh, billboards and image layers and stuff like that. But let's get started from the basics here. The first thing we're going to talk about is how to uh, the various methods of importing videos into your iClone project. So I have this Explorer window open with a number of different videos uh, in my production resources folder here. And the first thing I'm going to show you is how to import a video in as a background. So I'm going to take this forest video here and just simply left click and drag it onto my project uh, in an empty space in the background there. And that's going to basically have a stationary video in the background. Now if I move my uh, grid, you know, I can zoom in, zoom out and around and everything like that, and the background isn't going to move, it's going to stay stationary. Um, I can turn my grid off by pressing Control G, uh, toggle that thought back on and off like that. Now notice as well that the, uh, I'm going to take the grid off actually, notice as well that these uh, trees are a little bit stretched, like the video seems like it's sort of stretched to fit our background, and that is actually the case, because this is a 720p video, uh, 1280 by 720 If I go up here to Render, and I go to Render Video, Notice that under output size, we currently have 800 by 600. If I switch that to 1280 by 720, uh, you can see that this it suits it a lot better. It fits perfectly in there. And I happen to know that the video is, in fact, 1280 by 720. So that's a perfect fit. And now, if you want to get rid of your background or you want to tile it or stretch it or anything like that, you can press Control, Shift, and P. And then I'll open up your project options here. And there is a section called 2D Background. You can change the display mode from stretch to tile to fit. And uh, you can also deactivate the image. So that'll take it back to the default background color right here. So I'm going to just close that down and press Control G to turn the grid back on. And let's talk now about importing in billboards. Now for this example, I'm going to go over here to our media tab. And I'm going to go into the videos. This is where all your embedded icon videos are. There's not really that many of them. I've also downloaded a couple uh, from the content store, this motion design pack. Um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to right click and drag a video from my library here onto my scene. So I'm going to right click and drag this eyeball right into the middle. And we're going to import this as a billboard. Now we also have the option for plane and image layer and background texture, which is the first, uh, the first one that I just did there. But I'm going to choose billboard for now. Now notice that this is a billboard of an eye kind of facing us, and if I move around my scene, left and right or whatnot, the eye continues to follow us. So basically, the billboard will always be facing the camera, no matter which direction you turn. All right, and but we want to get rid of this black background around the billboard as well. Now to do that, the easiest way to do it is to go into your materials. Uh, once you have your billboard selected, go to your material tab up here, and you can see we have an opacity channel that we can import in a map to. So I'm going to take this, uh, fortunately we have this one that's generously provided for us, uh, default with iClone. I'm going to click and drag this eyeball um, opacity map onto the opacity channel. And you can see the background disappears. And now we, if we play back, we have this uh, disembodied rotating eyeball. And you can notice that it only rotates like three times. If you want to loop a video, you can press F3 to go into your timeline. And with your object selected, Make sure you have object related track selected, this one right here, and go to your video track. And in your video track, you should see there's a, uh, a track called D uh, Diffuse Video, and you should see the clip right there, and that's the length of your video. If you want to loop that, all you need to do is make sure you have looping toggled and click and drag just like this, and we could loop it to infinity and beyond. You can see we have the disembodied eye looking at us and looping over and over and over. It's kind of creep, kind of creeping me out. So let's go ahead and delete this eye for now. That's all we need to learn about uh, billboards. And let's move on now to image layers. So I'm going to close down my timeline for now and go back to uh, frame one here. In, uh, as far as image layers are concerned, I'm going to actually import in, first of all, a pop video. So I'm going to go to my pop video sampler. This is a pack you can download from the content store. And under motion elements and under the other folder, there is a indieink.pop video file right here. So pop video files are generally already chroma keyed. The backgrounds have been removed or they have the transparent uh, properties on them. So I'm going to right click and drag this pop video file into my screen and import it as an image layer. Now an image layer, to put it simply, is something that will always be stuck to the front 
of your lens. Just just imagine it as it's stuck to your the, your camera lens. Um, so if I click and drag this around, and I'm going to stretch it out to the entire scene here. Uh, you can stretch it out like that. If I play back, notice that we have a cool kind of uh, you know uh, fancy looking artistic looking background, or in this case a foreground, because the image layer is over top of everything in your scene. Like I mentioned, it's like kind of like it's attached to the camera. So this could be used for some sort of like, you know, to add atmosphere to a horror scene or a artistic music video or something like that. We'll just go ahead and stop that right now. And let's take a look at another example. So I'm going to go to my scene tab here with the image layer selected. I'll just go ahead and delete it. And I'm going to load in a, a regular video this time. So I'm going to go back to the video root folder. And this time I'm going to right click and drag in this Vine Flourish uh, video right here. I'm going to import this in as an image layer and we'll go ahead and uh, you can see it's completely black right now. So we'll do the same thing. Um, just stretch it out to the entire scene. And if I play back, we have this cool design that flourishes like that. Now, um, obviously in this case, we want to see the background. So what I can do is go to my materials tab up here and we have that same opacity channel. So I can take that same video. The advantage of having a black and white video like this is you can basically use the same video as uh, an, op an opacity mask. Um, and so I'm gonna just click and drag this onto my opacity channel and you can see nothing will appear until our flourish comes in like that. So you can do that pretty much with any video that's black and white, uh, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and delete that image layer for now. And the next one I wanna talk about is the planes. This is the last method of importing. So let's go back to our videos here. I'm just gonna right click and drag this New York traffic scene anywhere in our scene, doesn't really matter. And I'm gonna select plane this time. So a plane is basically just like a, a prop, um, just like a, very similar to a billboard, um, except the plane is not always facing the camera like the billboard is. So planes can be useful for, you know, if you wanted a video on a wall and your character's walking through, you, you, you obviously don't want it to be always looking at the camera unless it's kind of following the camera around, um, but it can be useful for stuff like that. And it plays on both sides, as you can see right here. So if I play back, it's just like a prop. Uh, you can resize it uh, using the R hotkey. You can resize it like this. Like you can stretch it down like that. Um, I can also move it around my scene, rotate it, and everything like that. That's the uh, W E R, -R hotkeys. In case you're not familiar with those hotkeys that I'm using, W E and R uh, for movement, rotation, and scale. So let's take a look at another uh, another type of plane. So I'm going to delete this one right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and uh, load in a couple of simple props here. Um, I'm going to load in a, a floor under props here. Um, I'm going to go to 3D blocks and wall and floor. Let's just load in a simple wall and a simple floor. Just double click those and that will add it to our uh, scene root, which you can see right here. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to add in a uh, pop video as a plane. And this pop video has already been chroma keyed, so the background, the green screen has already been removed. Uh, let's go back to our video folder right here. Uh, I believe the video I saved in the pop video sampler folder. Yeah, right here. So this is a meme, uh, mime, meme, mime.pop video. So let's right click and drag this in front of our plane here and let's import it as a plane. Uh, in front of the wall, let's import it as a plane there. All right, so you can see the mime pops up and there's a shadow behind him. So uh, even though the uh, the opacity has, uh, you know, been chroma keyed and everything like that, we have a nice shadow so we can place our mime uh, you can just imagine this is some sort of stage or something like that we can place them on the ground keep in mind that with a plane you have to keep the camera angle consistent because the character will not always be facing the camera so you can uh, just move them over there and uh, move them a little bit further down maybe something like that and you may want to probably use a background or something like that but in this case let's just go ahead and play back and we can see this mime dancing around in glorious 60 frames per second. And uh, you can see him just doing his little, uh, I'm not sure what that's called. Um, and we can also use the forward slash key to move the light around and shine the light at various angles. So this is a good example of how you can integrate, um, you know, a, a chroma keyed video into your scene uh, using pop video or using whatever software you use. And, uh, you know, props can also cast shadows on planes as well. So if I wanted to, you know, go into my props here and say, for example, add in a tree. We have a random tree in this scene. Uh, where's our trees? Oh, trees are down here, right? All right, so we'll go to uh, broadleaf. We'll just load in some 
African acacia tree. I'm not even sure if that's how you pronounce it. But uh, you can see that if we uh, place this in front of our mime, we get it integrated with our scene, and he can, you know, dance in the shadows just like that. All right, so that's a pretty cool example of how you can, you know, integrate your uh, permakeet videos into your scene. Let's just go ahead and get rid of all this, start a new project. And I'm just going to go back to render video. I wanted to, it's probably the faster way to do it. Let's go back to 720p there. And what we're going to talk about now is importing videos to different channels. Uh, such as your opacity channel, which we already did, but we're also going to uh, explore the glow channel. So to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and load in a simple uh, primitive shape under props again and 3D blocks. Uh, we should have a ball or a sphere here. I'll just go ahead and double click that. So what we're going to do this sphere is we're going to add a video onto the sphere, obviously. So let's go back to our uh, video root folder here. And I have this cool looking particle or random video. Uh, so I'm just going to simply left click and drag this onto my prop. And when you do that, it's automatically going to go to the diffuse channel. So uh, you can see it turns black because the background of the video is black. And we have these cool particles, you know, floating around our scene, or floating around our prop rather. Now we want to obviously use that same video for the opacity channel, just like we did before. So let's go into our materials right here. And let's click and drag that same video onto the opacity channel right here. And you can see that when we do that, the background disappears. But if I press play, we can see a vague outline, uh, still, still see a vague black outline. And we can adjust this if you just pause it really quick. We can adjust this by going down to our alpha threshold, uh, selecting the alpha threshold, and you can see that we can increase or decrease that. And the according results are the uh, resulting uh, results on our uh, on our little sphere there. All right, so we have this, uh, you know, this, this level right here I think is pretty good. And you can also notice that we can't see the back of the sphere. Uh, generally we want to see that if we're trying to, you know, bring realism to our transparent sphere. So we can go ahead and just select two-sided. And when we do that, we can see the other side of the sphere as well. And so now we have this uh, um, transparent, cool looking sphere. And you can do this with any video. You know, the cool thing about uh, videos with black backgrounds is you can also use them as opacity maps. And we're also gonna like, load in the same video as a glow map as well. So let's go over to our video channel again and load in that same video to the glow channel. And when we do that, let's go ahead and press Control Shift P and give ourselves a darker background just to kind of get, it, get more in the mood here. All right, and Control G to turn off that grid. And now we should have a ethereal glowing sphere right here. You can see those particles are glowing. We can move around just like this which is uh, pretty cool. So that's a cool effect that you can uh, create just by importing the same video into three different channels. Now let's talk a little bit about UV mapping. Say for example, we wanted to have even more particles on the sphere. Well, the way we can do that is go to our material tab and go all the way down to the bottom and we have UV settings. Now this is for mapping your video to different types of surfaces. So the planar would be like a, a plane, um, can be a whole number of different things. So we'll talk more about planar in a bit. Um, box is fairly simple and straightforward, so it's spherical and cylindrical. So because we have a sphere or a ball, let's just select the spherical and let's go ahead and apply this. Now you can see that it'll just apply to a different axis. We can apply it to the Y axis right here. And when we do that, all this, all the kind of particles will come out of this little center over here. And if we do it on the Z axis, they should be coming out of the top, I believe. Yep, right there. So that's where all the particles are coming out. Now say for example you wanted even more particles, you wanted to kind of uh, tile this a little bit per se. You can do that by going down to the tiling here and you know increasing the U value to something like 3, increasing the vertical value to something like 3, and uh, going and pressing apply. And when we do that you can see we have a whole bunch more particles, going particles everywhere. It's, it's tiling, but you can't really tell because it's kind of randomized, so this is a pretty cool effect and you can tile it like that to create a you know a glittering, glowing sphere uh, for whatever scenario, whatever purposes you would like. And you can also offset this, which we'll talk about in just a moment. I'm going to create a new project here because I'm lazy to delete everything there. Control G to turn on our grid again. Let's go ahead and take a look at um, uh, applying UV mapping to a box. So let's go ahead and double click this box. And I'm going to load in a different video, this VU meters video. Let's we'll apply that to the diffuse channel right there. And notice that when we do that, it applies the um, video to the entire box. So it's kind of like distributed in a weird way around the entire box. 
So the easiest way to fix that, uh, say for example, we wanted it to show on each side individually, we can go to our materials again, down to the bottom. Planer should work as well for boxes. We can go ahead and apply. Um, doesn't really work, I guess. Uh, planer works on generally on two sides um, of, a, of a cubicle object. And you can see this one here is stretched. If we play back, we get kind of a cool effect over here, actually. You can use that for you know certain things. But our view meter is over here. So we want to try and fix that. We could try it with the uh, y-axis. It just basically creates it on a different axis. But if we choose box, for example, we no, we'll no longer have that planar kind of thing. And it'll actually be the same on each side, each face of the box. So let's go to the y and then up. I think the z would be the one that we want. Yeah, going up and down like this. So, and then we can like, you know, stretch this box out if we want. So we can expand it. Um, and we can move this one smaller and get a result like that. And, you know, here's our VU uh, meters going crazy like this. Now, if we wanted to um, add more uh, VU meters, we could do that as well. We can tile it, you know, a value of two right here, and that'll just double it up like that. And then we can also offset it as well. Uh, if you want to offset it, you know, and you can't really tell at this point. I think we have to go like 0 0.2 maybe. And it'll just kind of offset a little bit just like that. Um, like I mentioned, it really depends on the prop that you're using. The offset can, you know, have varying results uh, and also according to your UV settings. Uh, but just keep that in mind. And let's talk finally about timing and volume of your videos. So to do this, I'm going to go to my uh, props. And under my props, I have I've downloaded a uh, content pack called Virtual Studio Volume 1. This is a great pack if you're doing, you know, virtual TV sets or news sets or anything like that. I'm just going to go ahead and load in a prop called a, uh, well, a TV set here, I guess. Uh, I'm just going to double click and load in this TV one. So what I'm going to show you is, uh, say for example, you only wanted your video to start playing at a certain time. Now, I already showed you how to loop the video using the billboard. Um, say for example, you wanted to, your video to play at a certain time. You wanted to uh, not start until a certain time. And you wanted to change the volume. So you want to turn the volume up and down and everything like that. Well, you can do that. Let's go ahead and load in a video onto this TV first. Let's, um, I'm going to choose this atmosphere video right here. This is one of our, you may recognize this from our YouTube channel. I'm just going to left click and drag it and it'll, uh, apply directly to our scene, right? Or to our screen, not our scene right there. All right. So now if we, uh, play back by pressing the space key, hmm. you can see JP changing outfits and everything like that and finally changing into a, uh, Beautiful woman. Yeah. Alright, so say for example we wanted we had a scene where a character is watching TV and he didn't turn on the TV until a certain time. Well we can press F3 on the TV and go into our timeline here. And we need to open up the video channel one more time here. And notice that we have a display one diffuse video and a display one diffuse volume. Let's talk about the video first. So say, for example, in our particular scene, we didn't want it to start until, say, frame 300. We can just simply click and drag this video down to frame 300. And as long as the beginning is at frame 300, it's only going to start at that point. You can see the results right there. So if I press space and play back, nothing will happen until right here. All right, and then say, say for example, we didn't want the sound to start it was on mute for, for, for some reason until this point where the lady appears. So we can go right here and we can just simply double click in the diffuse volume track right here and we can have the volume at full. And then maybe somewhere down here we can do the same thing and bring the volume down to zero. So that means from this uh, keyframe until this keyframe the volume is going to boost up. And then from here at the very beginning we also want to make sure we have you know, zero volume right here. So this area here doesn't matter because we don't have anything playing anyways. So it'll be like this. And it'll be completely silent up until this point. And then from here to here, we'll have a little bit of a... And that's where the volume comes up. All right, so that's how you can adjust the... Uh, that's how you can adjust the volume of the video and you can adjust the timing of the video and everything like that. Um, that's really all I wanted to get into in this tutorial, just a simple introduction uh, to, just to show you all the different possibilities. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video.